Hello everyone, I thought this week we'd talk about castration. Uh, it's something that we do relatively commonly. It's often uh, a difficult subject to discuss, um, especially with men that bring their dogs in uh, for obvious reasons. Um, but I just wanted to chat about what it is, what we're trying to achieve with it, uh, and what the alternatives are uh, at the moment. So what is castration? Castration uh, is clearly removal of both the testicles, and it can be done in, in a few different ways. But the most common ways, I suppose, would be uh, making a little incision in front of the scrotum and surgically removing the, the testicles through that incision. Uh, that's called a pre-scrotal incision. Or the alternative would be to essentially take the scrotum off with the testicles in them, and that's called a, a, a scrotal ablation. Now, in general, most of the time we do pre-scrotal because it's a much smaller uh, incision, but in large dogs that would end up with um, sort of a pendulous scrotum afterwards, um, we would go for the, for the scrotal ablation. We take it all away. So by taking the testicles away, it has two effects. The first thing is clearly spermatozoa, sperm, can't be produced anymore. They can't be released and, uh, and ejaculated and, you know, cause pregnancy. So that's a good thing, number, number one good thing. Worth notice, noting, though, just a bit a bit like um, having your tubes tied, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a man, it can take a certain amount of time for those spermatozoa to, to exit the body. And generally, sort of eight weeks, is, is six to eight weeks is the quoted time where you just have to be a little bit careful of post-operatively, there is a small chance they could cause uh, it could cause a pregnancy at that point. There might be still a few little sperms in there that need to need to come out. Um, the second effect of castration is clearly once the testicles are gone, the testicles produce testosterone, so testosterone levels really plummet. Um, now, testosterone has a, a lots and lots of uh, effects. Um, they, you know, cause beard growth. Uh, they cause men to have greater it causes men or males to have greater bone density higher muscle strength that that, that kind of stuff um but one of the things it does do is it, it drives secondary sexual behaviors and in dogs we're thinking about running off cocking legs humping activity etc etc and one of the questions i quite commonly get asked is will uh, castration cure dot 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 problem uh, sex, uh, behavioral issue now in general castration will lower the drive to do uh, to perform behavior which is the secondary sexual behavior so behavior like running off like cocking legs and um, that can be helped by castration or it certainly will reduce the drive for it um, however quite often we see these issues in older dogs where perhaps this behavior has been going on for some time and those neural pathways have really been laid in and you know it can be really difficult to you know castration on, on its own isn't going to break that will reduce the drive but the patterns of behavior may well still be there and so there needs to be a little bit of retraining as well for for optimal effect um so castration can help with aggression and nervousness and things like that it's all a little bit you know hazy to be honest um potentially it potentially could 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 help it potentially could make things worse as well um now dogs which are really anxious sometimes they seem to rely on a little bit of testosterone to give them that sort of confidence to to be out there um so actually castrating anxious dogs might make them more anxious and problem behavior is even worse so i think it, you need to to look at it very much on a case by case basis it's not, it's certainly not a panacea it's not a cure all for everything one thing it will do is it will stop dogs from producing entire male dog pheromones so when they're out and about and they're walking around um they're not going to be producing male dog pheromones which means that other entire male dogs won't recognize them as entire male dogs and that may well reduce the sort of challenge and negative reactions that your dog might have when 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 he's out and about on on a walk and so for anxious dogs having other dogs not coming up to them and challenging them because they're entire males well they might they might feel more confident going out on walks after after something like that so you know it, it is very much a 
it, it, it's really difficult to give a prediction on, on what the effects of castration are going to be. And one thing that I would say is sort of earlier castration will reduce uh, the development of secondary sexual behavioural problems. Um, but obviously earlier castration can give rise to sort of long leggy dogs because it tends to de delay the growth plate closure. And I've got an article on the website, on our website about that. So what can we do then with these dogs? Well, we can't, they've got an issue. We can't really predict what, you know, what the effect of surgery is going to be. Obviously, once the testicles have been removed, they're gone. There's no putting them back afterwards. Um, there is an alternative, though. Um, there is an implant called supralorin. Now, supralorin, basically, it causes chemical castration. Um, we put the implant in. It looks like a microchip. It's put in, in exactly the same way as a, a microchip. And it, there's two strengths. It lasts for either a minimum of six months or a minimum of 12 months. And essentially, it will produce all the effects of surgical castration, but it will wear off after some time. And usually with the lower strength, I would expect after 12 months, it would start to wear off. And with the higher strength, after, after two years. So supralorin basically acts... The, the, the mechanism which testosterone is secreted, it comes from the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus uh, releases something called gonadotrophin releasing hormone. It stimulates that the hypothalamus in the brain. It goes down to the to pituitary and the pituitary then stim, uh, releases follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And that then is released into the bloodstream, goes to the gonads, either the ovaries or the testicles and produces estrogen or, or or testosterone so essentially hypothalamus gnrh to pituitary pituitary fsh and lh to the testicles um desralorin which is in supralorin is basically a gnrh analog so it's a synthetic analog it looks like gnrh but it's at really really high levels which is weird because you think well doesn't that just cause lots and lots of testosterone to be produced well, it does initially. So initially, having the implant in will stimulate the pituitary to produce lots and lots of FSH and LH. So there'll be initial spike in testosterone. But after a few days, the body's always trying to get itself back in balance, called homeostasis. And so it down-regulates these receptors in the brain. And so the secretion of FSH and LH just falls off a cliff. And so the production of uh, testosterone also falls off a cliff. So... It, it, it's pretty safe. Um, in fact, it's very safe. The major side effect that we see are, is irritation, swelling, a um, little bit of redness, erythema at the site of, of the implant. We've never seen any, anything worse than that. Um, so it, it's pretty safe. It's obvious it's working because the testicles really, really shrink down. Um, I mean, that they, they shrink by 50%. And you can actually tell when it's starting to wear off because it's, they start to enlarge again. The implant itself, like I say, size of a grain of rice, goes in in normal consultation, uh, a bit like a microchip, and it's biocompatible. So after uh, 12 months or 24 months, when it's wearing out, it's it's all being res resorbed. So there's nothing left in, in the dog afterwards. And you can put another one in at, at that point. So essentially, it's a really good try before you buy. You can put the you can put the implant in to a, a dog, and you can observe what the effects on the behaviour of that dog are as the testosterone levels go down. So it's a, a really nice safety blanket for people who are a little bit unsure or behaviourists who are trying to advise their clients on what the effect of super or, or the effect of reduced testosterone levels is going to be on that dog's behaviour. Um, Usually, sort of eight weeks after implantation, they're entirely they're, they're infertile. There is a small number of dogs. I think in a study, two in thirty, it took them twelve weeks. So generally, I recommend twelve weeks after implantation before you can be uh, certain that there's no sperms being produced and testosterone levels are, are really low. So there you go, castration. Like I say, it's an it's an unpleasant subject, but it, it is something that we do see an awful lot of, and and primarily it's not a health issue; it's more a social issue. So 
I think we need to be fully informed. You know, we're taking healthy animals and we're doing something to them for, for really our benefit. We need to make sure that we're doing the minimum that's required and we're doing it in a, in a welfare friendly manner. So I hope this helps and I'll see you all soon. Bye.